can we build a playable legacy deck using only cards with an odd converted mana cost? Oh boy, here we go. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com and Cool Stuff Inc. And Cool Stuff Inc. is awesome, and they are giving away a $50 gift card to one of the people who comments on today's video. So uh, please do that if you want to be entered in this. And if you're looking to buy some cards, promo code THRABENU will go ahead and save you 5% on your order. So Obosh, huh? That's what we're doing today. Now, Obosh has a pretty interesting companion restriction. Your starting deck can only contain odd converted mana cost cards and land cards. But if a source you control with an odd converted mana cost will deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that instead, effectively doubling the power of all of your creatures when they are going and doing combat damage. And this is going to be a little bit interesting to brew around, and Matt H. gave me a great starting point that I've tuned a little bit. The direction that we're going to be taking this one is in the direction of what we call Nick Fit, which traditionally refers to a black, green, and sometimes other colors mid-range ramp deck built around the interaction between Veteran Explorer and Cabal Therapy. By sacrificing Veteran Explorer to Cabal Therapy, you get two basic lands into play. Now, your opponent does too, but this is legacy, and a lot of times your opponent won't physically have two basic lands in their entire deck. Or if they have them, they might fetch them out early to play around Wasteland. You are looking to get more value out of your lands than your opponent, and so you play cards that are ridiculous by legacy standards. And one of the most iconic cards that represents this idea is Pernicious Deed which you can use to kind of nuke the world, reset the board, and you have a bunch of lands in play that you can use to start casting overcosted spells, or maybe funnel into a green sun zenith to go and hunt those cards up. One of the cute things that we're playing today is Thrun Breaker of Silence, which as long as it's my turn, it is indestructible. Guess what my pernicious deed is not going to destroy? I really hope that interaction comes up today because it is fire. And since we are going big with our mana, we are going to try out a couple of things that are maybe questionable by legacy standards. New Shouldred is a great example of that. It's got an edict effect on the front, followed by a relatively ridiculous amount of value on the back. So you can edict, next turn, flip it, edict again. Well, okay, it's not an edict, it's a destroy. But then after that, you're also going to get th like three discards and then sort of a mass reanimation effect. And then you get your shoulder back, and you could do the same song and dance again, at least in theory. So let's go ahead and take a look at the whole deck list now in all of its glory. This is what we're going to be playing today. So we have a relatively strong discard suite with Botsies backing up Cabal Therapy. And then we have, I can't really call them hate bears, but we're going to be playing these like opposition agent and endurance effects that have the potential to take over a game on their own in the right matchup, while otherwise just serving as strong utility cards. And as the game goes on, we're going to have Green Sun, which can go and get us Planeswalkers like Grist, as well as just absolutely overcosted, value-oriented bodies that are just going to be bigger than everything that's going on in Legacy. Veteran Explorer is primarily going to be sacrificed via Cabal Therapy, but we also have Phyrexian Tower so that we can do it off of a land. Our sideboard here is looking to play powerful haymakers like Seeds of Innocence to take over a matchup like 8-cast, or otherwise just have incredibly efficient removal that we can use to back up our creatures. Now, there's one sort of negative synergy thing in this deck. Um, Matt told me that they were a fan of Leyline of the Void in this deck, despite the fact that if we board it in, we no longer have access to Obosh. The idea being that Leyline of the Void requires a permanent based answer, right? You have to use your Serenity or whatever to answer that. Whereas something like Endurance is held in hand, so that requires something like Discard to stop. And the idea is that you're fighting on two different axes instead of doing something like Surgical Extraction, where both Surgical Extraction and Endurance can be hit by Discard. 
So that's kind of what's going on here. Let's go ahead and jump into the matches and see how this deck feels. Um, honestly, it looks a little odd to me. Get, get it? It's fun. Never mind. All right, here we go. I've revealed an Obosh. My opponent is leading on Volcanic Island. I'm a little mana heavy here. I'm kind of hoping I don't get stifled. Why do I talk? Why do I say words? All right. Triumph? Just guy Triumph. Okay. Surely. Surely you don't have two stifles. Uh, whew. All right. All right. The comments section is losing its mind telling me not to uh, make these prophecies. Surely. Surely you don't have two stifles and then a swords to plowshares. Okay, we're in play. Agstones? All right. We're not endangering this thing in combat. We're just, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and tower it up. Get some basic lands. God, God damn it! No! This is illegal. I've typed it in chat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say here, folks. Excuse me? Is this the... Okay, this is the... Uh, sorry, my brain is mush. It's like... Oh? Oh? Uh, oh? Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and cast a green sun for X is 1. Find a new veteran explorer. There's a fourth stifle over there. I'm not, I'm not willing to risk it. I'm just going to do it while the stifle is down. We'll pick up a forest and another swamp. I am one mana short of doing the cool plays here. So given that, we're going to go ahead and put my commander, I mean companion, into my hand. Is my opponent a combo deck or is this just straight up like fair ramp? Just like fair ramp into this sort of thing. Uh, by the way, I think I had a half-finished thought for a minute ago. Um, Dig Through Time was the card I was going to compare this to. Oh. Untap up to two lands, you say? Okay. All right. This is on ETB, right? No, it's on attack or block. Inconvenient. Very inconvenient. I guess, first of all, let's see what's going on over there. Oh, they're just doing that again. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I, I hate this. Um, I think I take Spellseeker because it just like represents Ephemerate into an engine. Oh my gosh, this is a problem. Go ahead and fetch. Uh, Bayou seems fine. I'll leave some basics in the deck. Like, I can play out this 5-drop, but there's just, like, double snap plus Teferi bounce as well. well. It's not a bounce. Teferi tuck as well. Oh, they don't even feel... They don't even feel threatened enough. All right, I am going to get snapped. My opponent gets to untap that lovely, lovely Lotus Field, and then they can flash this back for 7 mana. I'm not even mad. I'm just impressed that this is working. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I will go for another thought seize here. <laughs> like, how, how am I going to win? I, like, legitimately do not know. I'm not going to concede this game despite the fact that I think I'm, like, 95 plus percent dead. All right. And we'll just drop another creature into play so that my opponent has two things that they need to think about. What's the ultimate for this? Oh. Sure. That's fine. What? What? Oh. Well, I am glad that I am continuing the game to learn more about my opponent's deck list. 
but I, 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 I can't possibly ever beat this emblem, right? Like, what, what would I even do to beat that? Something else is coming. And it's big. And it's so big. Oh, we're just gonna do that again. Yeah, this is cute. And they untap. Man, they can now untap two lotus fields in the same turn cycle. Oh, this is legendary. I should have floated a mana there. Um, let's see what's in the deck. Narrator's voice. This is not going to resolve. And I am comfortable conceding here. I, I got my ass absolutely beaten by this deck. But I have bad news and I have bad news. The bad news is that I'm down a game. And the bad news is that I don't think I get to sideboard. I don't think Leyline of the Void is super reasonable here. Like, I have Endurance, which should clear out, uh, what is it called, um, the Memory Deluges from the Graveyard. I don't know, Shouldred's really bad. Or sorry, Shriek Maw's really bad. Shouldred's good. That can make them sacrifice a Planeswalker. Opposition Agent is good. Uh, actually, Deed's probably not good, right? Opponent showed me like planeswalkers and lands. Freak Maw's bad. All right, I think we are legit just boarding in an Obosh as a card to play and submitting like this. This is a really awkward hand. Like the Dryad Arbor is in hand, so my Green Sun isn't good. I don't have a Veteran Explorer for Cabal Therapy. Well, I could just blind Cabal Therapy on turn one into green sun on turn two. Okay. So is Stifle the name? I think I'm going to fetch a Bayou here. And Cabal Therapy naming Stifle. It. Get that out of there. And we know everything else that my opponent has access to. They're going to play a Flagstones and pass. Oh. This is a sick interaction. Opposition Agent plus Veteran Explorer Sack is disgustingly good. I think I don't Cabal Therapy here to try to do that next turn. Yes. Let's do it. Pick up the Veteran Explorer and pass the turn. Opposition Agent is really good here. All right, there is a Basic Planes. Send in for a mighty one point of damage. Then my opponent doesn't have Stifle up. We'll get a third Bayou. Go ahead and cast Opposition Agent. The Ball Therapy target my opponent. Sacrificing Veteran Explorer. I'll pick up a Forest and a Swamp. My opponent has chosen No here. I'm going to go ahead and take the Memory Deluge. And then I'll clear it from the graveyard with Endurance. Ooh! Ooh, that is delicious. All right, there is a tapped land. Uh, let's rumble here. My opponent's at 16. I will drop a Dryad Arbor, and I have the intention of casting an Endurance at the end of turn. Um, yeah, that's fine. That makes sense with the whole Lotus Field thing here. But now Lotus Field enters untapped as a land that taps for three. I may actually get punished a little bit for playing Dryad Arbor. My opponent snaps Opposition Agent back to play. I can't cast that and Endurance in the same turn cycle here. That was like known information too. Could have played around that. Ooh, they are not going for the snap though. Never punished. Get out of that graveyard. Um, let's continue to s fuck. <laughs> I was going to finish that thought by saying, let's continue to fetch around Stifle. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is gross. Like, I cleared out the primary source of card advantage that my opponent has in those memory deluges, but my opponent now just gets to play some big plane. Yeah. Ugh. This deck. 
It's got my number. Uh, that's not helping. I think I igno ignore the Planeswalker and go for my opponent's life total. I'm just not going to kill that Teferi and my opponent. Alright, I get that one point of damage off. On it doesn't do anything with mana, end of turn. Ava, they've got some options. <laughs> oh my god, so much mana. I'm happy for my opponent. Alright, so we do get to see what nonsense this does. Alright, they are just going with a snap. Uh, this can get kind of silly. So they snap that thing. They can then just go ahead and recast it. And snap it again. Uh-huh, yep. Yes. I, I, where is it going? Okay, it's just doing fair stuff. This is a pretty disgusting amount of value that my opponent is uh, cooking up over here. Like, there's just so many bonus cards off of those snaps. Fast shuffle. I'm just going to dismiss these. Okay. Once more, into the deck. Burning Wish. The storm is 11. Am I going to die? Am I just going to, like, fucking die, right? Oh my god. Oh. Um. Um. Wow. That's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. Magic is great. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, which is just the best place to host your online deck lists, and I don't think it's close. I think it's wonderfully organized, and you can have a great system of folders so that you can go through, separate your decks by whatever you want. I separate mine by format. Um, I have just a few legacy decks, and Moxfield is able to keep track of all the decks that even someone like me makes, so please consider checking them out. So this hand can turn to Opposition Agent. On the draw, which isn't as good, I'm not really super excited about this hand, but like I'm on the draw, I'm going to get an extra card a good portion of the time over my next couple of draws, I'll draw another threat, and if I don't, I still have this. Uh, we're potentially playing against combo. So an early opposition agent could be good. Do I want to just Yu-Gi-Oh! Heart of the Cards, Cabal Therapy, naming probably like show and tell here? I think I do. Then I just Veteran Explorer and do it again next turn. I also could just name something safe here like Brainstorm. But Spirit Aim's pretty uncommon. Okay, name the correct deck, but missed. I also would have missed on Brainstorm, unfortunately. Um, welcome to the power of knowing, like, legacy cards, right? Like, I see Preordain, I'm able to identify the fact that this is probably show and tell. Like, that's huge. We do have, uh, we do have this thing to worry about. That was bottom, bottom there. No shuffle with ponder. Not really the biggest fan of how all this is going to go down for me. Still think I need to do this. The wall therapy target you. All right. I'm going to name Vesuvian Drifter. It's unfortunate if my opponent has already found their creature. As my opponent just gets to sneak attack me, activate, and then I lose everything. But in the instances where they don't have it in hand already, this is very good with cantrips. Uh, yeah, I concede here. I'm just not going to recover from four of my lands being obliterated. Uh, so I have Inquisitions, I have Rexage, and I have Run Afoul as things that are reasonable in this matchup. Pernicious Deed is not the best here. Um, this is probably not a... Lissa matchup for the most part. Like, it can technically attack and destroy a uh, sneak attack, but I don't know. That seems rough. Pernicious Deed answers my opponent's stuff, but is just so incredibly slow, and I'm bringing in more removal cards. I guess Endurance doesn't particularly do anything impressive here. I could go down on those. And then keep this removal and the other top end. That's fine. The Suvin Drifter's so good against the discard, though. Like, they just put that into play. And then a lot of my other stuff doesn't quite matter. Uh, this Dryad Arbor is incredibly awkward. I can shred my opponent's hand, but... I don't know, maybe it's not as bad as I think. 
So do this into Inquisition. Turn two Blade Riot Arbor, Cabal Therapy. Cabal Therapy twice if I really have to. Turn three Veteran Explorer, start doing other stuff. Um, this is unexciting, I guess I'll keep. The information that Inquisition of Kozilek gives is pretty big here. Okay, uh, I need to take the Brainstorm here so that my future copies of Cabal Therapy can actually hit. I want to play out the pedal now. Oh, another pedal now. Ponder's fine. And a shuffle, a Phyrexian Tower. An awkward land to draw. Well, let's Cabal Therapy target my opponent. I name Sneak Attack if this resolves, I think. Or I could name Force of Will, get my guaranteed two for one, and then play Dryad Arbor and sacrifice it to get Sneak Attack. I think I'm okay with that. All right. We got Sneak Attack and Atraxa as the two remaining cards here. We'll sack that Dryad Arbor and leave the Atraxa stranded in hand. We'll name Sneak Attack. My opponent will just have Go and Tell as their top card, and I will be sad. Okay. I wasn't quite right. However, I wasn't that far off. Yeah, this thing's horrifying. Like, my discard is now very bad. I'm going to go ahead and green sun here. I think I'm still getting veteran next. I don't know. My opponent's on one land. Maybe I just get ignoble hierarch. Don't have anything super scary to cast anyway. This is horrifying. Because with that brainstorm, my opponent can just put that Atraxa on top and dome me for seven while gaining seven. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um... No, we can we can just we can just quit. This is not a good matchup. Oh my god. GG's. You know, these Dryad Arbor opening hands kind of suck, but I think the hand is still probably a keep. I get to shred my opponent's hand with Cabal Therapies and then like maybe hard cast a Shriek Maw and use this Green Sun to get something good out of my deck. To do that plan though, this does need to be a Bayou which will open me up to Wasteland. And when I don't know anything in the dark, my Cabal Therapy name is always just Brainstorm. Uh, whiff. And a pretty bad whiff, honestly, because my opponent just has multiple counterspells for this Veteran Explorer. Uh, in actually kind of a frustrating way. So I probably just Cabal Therapy again this turn and have them counter that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Cabal Therapy days this turn. That's what I accomplished. And it also bounced a land back to your hand. Now, in second main phase here, I can sack a Dryad Arbor to Cabal Therapy my opponent. I don't think I'm into that, though. Like, I would like to avoid making plays that destroy my lands. So now I will go ahead and cast a Veteran Explorer. All right, my opponent is letting that resolve. I'll go ahead and sacrifice my Veteran Explorer. Pick up some forests. What is the card that I care about here? Murktide Regent is answerable via Shriek Maw. I think I just named Force of Will. Woohoo, two Death Shadows in hand. Uh, I will take those. Am I getting another Veteran Explorer here? No, I don't think that's the line. The line is do this for three, get Grist, plus Grist for an Insect, Cabal Therapy, target my opponent, sacrificing this Insect. Then we'll go ahead and name Death Shadow, getting the two for one. And if my opponent marked out Regents, I have that thing covered multiple different ways. So yeah. I wonder what the green is for. Maybe, like, Berserk? Your Merktide Regent resolves. I'm gonna go ahead and start this turn with hard casting this. My opponent could have drawn exactly days. If that happens, I'll Grist Minus to kill Merktide. But it did not happen. Absolutely disgusting. And we took a land off the top of our deck. Okay, this is what I came here to do. The opening hand was a little sketchy with the Dryad Arbor, but it did all kind of work out. 
Run afoul is a great answer to Merktide Regent in particular. I don't think I'm going to mess around with Leyline of the Void here. My deck's a little bad at answering Merktide Regent, though. Greek Maw, Shouldred, three Run afoul. I guess that's not that bad. This is my worst card here. Am I just, like, not fighting on the di discard axis? I could see that. I keep Cabal Therapies for the synergy with Veteran Explorer and... Submit like this. There's one Dryad Arbor in my effing deck, right? Yes. Yes, there is. Yeah, this, this hand is totally keepable if this is literally any other card, I think. Oh, that's frustrating. Double Run of Foul is really good, though. Um, this is so good. Fuck it. All right, let's see what happens here. 17 and a Ponder. Fetching Bayou is a little awkward here. I'm probably going to fetch a basic forest, despite the fact that that takes me off of some early black mana. I just don't want to get wastelanded off of four different spells simultaneously. Yeah. Especially with another one of those, I think we just get basic forest. And drop veteran explorer. Phase is fine. This dryad arbor has just been glued to my hands this, this league so far. All right, opponent drops to 15 for a shock. Uh, let's attempt another Veteran Explorer. They are going to go fishing for a daze in response. Oh, they found it. Um, that's not the best for me. Nuff out would be real bad. One's at 13. Okay, cool. We dodged snuff out. That's a really big deal. I just drew the card that I was going to green sun for. That's really awkward. Am I going to just go get a Veteran Explorer, despite the fact that I can't immediately sacrifice it? Feels like no. Like, I want I want this in play. I think I do this off of Dryad Arbor. Maybe, maybe I attack? I don't know. I don't really want to attack right now. I want to lower my opponent's life total here. I will just leave up a run afoul. I've already cleared two dazes. I don't feel too bad about casting a run afoul into a third one. I'd be very happy to trade with a force of will. All right. Down to 10. All right, there's the Merktide Regent. We're going to cast a run afoul at end step and see if it resolves. If it doesn't, I run afoul again. If it does, I get to play Grist. Oh shit, it just does. Uh, this is a land here. One hundo percent, this is a land. Uh, let's go ahead and Grist. Plus. And we'll crash in with Dryad Arbor for two. Not bad. Alright, opponent goes to six here. Ooh, Abrupt Decay is very strong. Opponent has a Death Shadow. I can answer that with Pernicious Deed, it's just, like, very awkward to do so. I can Green Sun for up to X is 3. X is 3 is a new Grist. I think that solves the problem for what to do with this turn. Fine, unless my opponent's last card is Days. We'll go ahead and Grist minus. Back an Insect, take out Death Shadow. And we're doing okay. I would like more Persistent Mana. It's possible I have to use Pernicious Deed to clear out some stuff. Hey, it's more persistent mana. I'm going to go ahead and start with fetching. I always want a basic swamp here. Always plussing with Grist. Found some land. I'm always casting Green Sun for some amount. Probably X is 3. X is 2 would dodge Spell Pierce. This Glissa actually do. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and Endurance here. Just clear my opponent's graveyard. And we'll attack my opponent for a third of their life total. They are at four, facing down lethal next turn, and I kind of have two removal spells. Hey, we are on the scoreboard, folks. All right, we have a hand without Dryad Arbor, but I think this hand is just too slow by legacy standards. It doesn't do anything until turn three, and the things it does on turn three are just too fair. This is fine. 
It's not quite as sketchy as it looks. But it definitely looks a little sketchy. We're going to keep this, I think, binning one of the opposition agents. And potentially at the cost of being turned one by a combo deck. I believe it is correct to just start ramping. Because if I don't do this, I'll just draw the Dryad Arbor on turn two and lose my mind. All right, there we go. If I draw a land next turn, I have some really good lines available to me. Prismatic Vista is most commonly played in, like, blue-white control decks. But by no means is that a guaranteed thing. Okay, so I missed here. I think I'm just going to try to set myself up for success here. I whiffed on the land to do, like, a turn-two opposition agent or any number of other very strong generic plays. Like Cabal Therapy into Veteran Explorer, Cabal Therapy, Thoughtseize. Alright, so we are indeed getting those blue-white control vibes. I'm expecting to lose Veteran Explorer to something. Okay. Getting Jete. Ho ho ho. Well then. I'm going to start this turn with some nice therapy. We will name the card that we are guaranteed to hit. Ooh hoo hoo. Understood. Oh, this Force of Will is so awkward. If not for the Force of Will, I have Phyrexian Tower. Well, maybe I'll just go for it anyway. Actually, what if I float a mana with Dryad Arbor? Float a mana with Dryad Arbor. Cabal Therapy, you. Target. F yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. Float a mana. Cabal Therapy, targeting you. Sacrificing Dryad Arbor. My opponent Force of Willed that, pitching Shark Typhoon. This is fine. Now I play Phyrexian Tower. Sacrifice a creature. That's Veteran Explorer. Holding priority. Cast Opposition Agent. Now I will use this ability. Pick up a Forest and a Swamp. My opponent gets no lands out of that. Then I will go ahead and Thought Seize them, taking the Stoneforge Mystic, and they can have one Swords to Plowshares left over and a 1-2 to my much higher mana count. Okay, yeah, that's fine. They should probably at least consider fetching now because I just showed them Opposition Agent. Ooh, buddy. I want this green sun to be big. What big silly thing do I have at the end of the curve? Thrun's pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to reread Thrun. It's like hexproof against everything, right? Non-green sources. Yep. I will sacrifice this. Green and a black again. X is five. Let's us get Thrun. Thrun Breaker of Silence is here. Hello, and good luck, control deck. Sure, sure. Whoa! The JVP. It has been a hot minute since I've seen one of those. This backfires if my opponent randomly drew Cauldra. As Cauldra's exile thingy can still work on this. Alright, sure. Been a while. So... Alright, they're just gonna flash back a Ponder. That's fine. I think I just continue to whack my opponent and ignore the Planeswalker. I just need to close this game before they draw something that can beat Thrun. Like, there's potentially Supreme Verdict or Terminus or something in there. Probably not. Like, they're playing extra creatures. But, like, Cauldra's a problem. Another Stoneforge is a problem. Alright. Uh, Snapcaster's fine. That's just a preordain. Sure, sure. Okay, so Caracas doesn't actually answer this because Caracas is non-green. Uh, Gerst is a fine draw. Attack you. Ooh. Yeah. I called the thing that could beat me. Whenever this deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature, and it does not target. Super frustrating. Am I just dead to that? I lose that, I play a Grist, the Grist doesn't do anything anymore. I'm dead in roughly two turns to combat damage. 
speed doesn't kill that. Kind of has too many creatures for something like Shouldered to edict it out. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. This is why I was going aggro and ignoring the Planeswalker. Avoid this exact situation. Rex Sage is fine. These are playable. I think I get rid of this. My opponent just showed me a copy of Caracas. So that can go... Probably go down on the number of deeds that I'm playing. If I'm going to try to attack. I don't know. Inquisition missing Cauldra is such a big deal. Maybe I don't do that and I just keep these. These are going to miss JVP. I don't know. I'm not super happy with my boarding options. I'm super targeted at specific things, like graveyard focus combo decks with Leyline of the Void and Eight Cast with Seeds of Innocence, and like Delver with Run Afoul. And when that doesn't happen, I basically have three Inquisitions and a Rex Sage that I can think about boarding. All right, I'm perfectly comfortable keeping this opening hand here. I'm leading on Cabal Therapy, and I'm just thinking about how I want to approach this game with the name here. I think I'm just going to name Brainstorm so that my turn two therapy is most likely to hit. Okay. My opponent has a Force of Will that they can use on Veteran Explorer. Bottom, bottom there. Hello again. Riot Arbor, my old friend. Is this worth a two for one in your mind? All right, they are willing to accept this. Go ahead and just take a Bayou out of my deck. Ball therapy, sacrifice veteran explorer. Grab a forest and a swamp. I think I'm interested in taking force of will here. Okay, cool. And then if my opponent plays Stoneforge Mystic, I've got Opposition Agent for that. If they play Narset, I also have Opposition Agent to pressure that. Sure. That's no shuffle. This is my moment of glory. I was going to brainstorm in response. Grab Bayou and see if we get to be the fun police here. My opponent could have found Force of Will or Swords to Plowshares. Let's see if they did. Oh, they did not. So double Force of Negation, double Ponder, Narset, Stoneforge. I'm not going to exhaust them of basics. I'm just going to pull a Tundra out of their deck. All right. Go ahead and get on in there. Opponent's at 16. Let's Thought Seize. I guess the Narset is the most annoying thing here. At least for the time being. Let's see how they feel about letting me resolve this. Maybe worth a Force of Negation. Negative. I don't know that I want to play this Dryad Arbor. It technically speeds up my clock, but I just don't think I'm super interested in putting it into play after I just resolved Pernicious Deed. All right, there is a Shuffle. Second Ponder now has a chance to do something. That is also a Shuffle. Blooded Strand, not what they're looking for right now. And we're chilling. Play a Tundra. None of my stuff has haste, right? Yeah, none of my stuff has haste. Okay. Uh, if you had that, that was supposed to happen on my turn so that you could 100% fetch. This attempts to find a grist. But my opponent will force a negation that. They can't just get a win with Stoneforge Mystic. I have active Pernicious Deed to help out with that. Yep, yep. All right, do they have selected Cauldra? I'm going to wait to see if I have to crack the Pernicious Deed. Yeah, because if I draw a piece of discard, I actually don't have to do that. So, yeah. Name Cauldra. Containment Priest and Force of Will. Well, fun little factoid here. If my opponent had played Containment Priest, I couldn't actually do this, right? Because this is if it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Uh, but, you know, here we are. I will go ahead and take that Cabal Therapy. I'll be naming Force of Will here. And I'll leave my opponent with a known Containment Priest. This is fine. I'm fine with just taking a little bit of chip damage from Stoneforge Mystic. That shouldn't really matter. I don't think I play that. 
Again, it's just going to get caught up in deed. We're fine with taking Dunforge hits for like 10 turns if we have to. We're not going to trade a Pernicious Deed for a Stoneforge Mystic. Like that Stoneforge Mystic has already effectively cantripped. I'm fine with playing this out. This is going to be a slow game. Yeah, you can, you can keep attacking me. That's fine. I might have to play out the Ignoble Hierarch. So that I can attack in for larger amounts of damage. I don't really know that my opponent is going to keep that Containment Priest anymore. It's so awkward in the face of Pernicious Deed. All right, let's be the beatdown we want to see in the world. And attack for two. I'm just going to hold this Verdant Catacombs to bluff Opposition Agent here. Um, this is fine. Okay, sure. Opponent just completely disregards the Opposition Agent. Um, yeah, if you're not going to attack with both, I'll just take one. That's fine with me. That is not fine with me. Deed was printed before Planeswalkers, so it doesn't really know they exist, and thus ignores them. Uh, I think I go ahead and attempt to attack the Jace here, take that Containment Priest out of play. We'll go ahead and take some basics out of the deck here. Take one of each, that way yeah, I can hedge against something like a Back to Basics happening. Seems like my opponent's got something else here. A Vendillion click, sure. Targeting me. I've got nothing. I am not going to activate Pernicious Deed right now. That play is punished if my opponent has Caracas in hand currently to Caracas and bounce this click. All right. Their attacks are making... All right, they are going to attack with both. This Noble Hierarch is not really finishing off Jace. I am going to go ahead and do this for X's 3, clear both of those creatures. Click is a fast enough clock that I think it's correct to go ahead and do that. And I am not going to crack this fetch because Jace Fate Seal is a thing that I could care about. Sure. Yeah, that was always a risk in cracking the deed. I traded 1-3-1 one, one for another. Ugh. Uh, I save that before, like for immediately before I cast a critical spell. So I can draw something like a Shouldred that can get me back into this game. But my window for doing so is probably pretty small. I imagine that after one more Jace activation, I just can't physically win the game anymore. I'm just behind too many cards. Definitely. Oh, fuck. I forgot about my Obosh. Oh... Definitely Omega punished for not casting Thoughtseize. I mean, my opponent could have brainstormed into that this turn, but that's very bad for me. I take three from the attack. My opponent gets two Jete counters. I'm going to concede if I don't have a good draw, I think. Jace has been active for like three turns unchecked. All right. Life's bad. That's, that's not going to do it here. I, I am comfortable conceding to this trio of cards here. GG's. All right, I have kept an opening hand, which has the Cabal Therapy slash Veteran Explorer combo. I can do so off of basic lands to start with as well. Elvish Spirit Guide. Okay. Uh, oh, sh oh, God. All right, we are playing against Cheerios, so we lose game one in all likelihood. So Cheerios refers to the zero converted mana cost of these cards. Oh my god, we didn't lose on turn one. This is fantastic. So I will be casting a Cabal Therapy here for sure. I think I name a second Glimpse of Nature here. It's, is, it, is it really possible that my opponent ran out of zero drops and they have another Glimpse? Yeah, my opponent has said good luck. I could name Beck Call instead. If they had any zero drops, they would continue casting them, right? So they don't have zero drops, so I shouldn't name any of those. So Glimpse of Nature, Beck Call, Beastmaster's Ascendancy are things that I could name. Uh, I'm gonna go with Beck Call. Get wrecked, nerd! <laughs> <laughs> My opponent is losing their mind in chat over me getting that name. 
<laughs> if one has asked me if I am God. Negative. Scapegoat. Sure. This is a slightly different version than what I have played on my channel previously. We are going to go Forest, Veteran Explorer, Ball Therapy, Target You, Sacrifice Veteran Explorer. Yes. Pick up two basic lands my opponent will not have. I'll name Scapegoat with the first one of these, as it is an instant. Do I have any sort of anti-combo green card here? Not really. Just trying to think about how I do this optimally. No, I don't think it's like that. I think I will just Cabal Therapy them. Name the land grant. Deny the card. Play out Ignoble Hierarch. This is one, two, three, four, five. Riot Arbor represents six mana. And then next turn, I can play Glissa and Endurance. Uh, unless I draw a land, then I also get a Dryad Arbor attack. I don't need to do this right now. I will Glissa. Actually, Obosh to hand is potentially better. No. Um, we will just Endurance. I'm not going to put those back in their deck, I don't think. Ooh, 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 yeah. Three, six. I will go ahead and attack with both of these creatures. Alyssa has a trigger. I'll go ahead and draw a card and lose a life. Land is fantastic here. Go ahead and fetch. Grab Bayou. Play Pernicious Deed. Obosh to hand. Cabal Therapy. Target you. Name a Glimpse of Nature here. And my opponent has conceded. Excellent. So the game that I'm on the draw is going to be a little bit tough. I'm going to lean into the fail rate of my opponent's deck a bit. I get a little bit more discard. I think I will be playing all of these various things. My opponent does have searching stuff. Opposition agent is relevant. Uh, these are probably much less relevant. Do I need D? Do I need Seeds of Innocence in this matchup if I just have Pernicious Deed for X is zero? It depends. I haven't seen my opponent's full build, so I don't know if they're playing things like Kappa Cannoneer. Wrist isn't actually particularly good here. I'm probably going down on some bodies. The plan is just, like, disrupt my opponent and win somehow. Like, I can just kill my opponent with Obosh. My opponent has Mulliganed. I will keep this hand. All right. Here we go. Opponent has turn one glimpse. They are on a low-ish number of cards, so they are very much not guaranteed to be able to go off this turn. Okay, cool. We are playing magic. Uh, Veteran Explorer is not the best right now. I think I prioritize disrupting here. Okay, there's the there's the kill, and my opponent is done with me. Uh, that's totally fair. We end up with a 2-3 finish. All right, so that's the end of the league here. We got an okay finish. Let's pull up the deck list for some closing thoughts here. Ultimately, I feel like the juice was not worth the squeeze for our good friend Obosh here. Now, Obosh did eat some removal spells and discard spells and counter spells throughout the league i definitely forgot about it in one of the games so like that's my bad but i don't think obosh was going to be the like factor between success and failure there but ultimately i missed the two drops a lot questing beast in particular the ability to have haste and hit my opponent while also destroying all of their planeswalkers would have been really huge in like those blue white control stone blade style matchups i definitely missed having that and i felt a lot of tension in my pernicious deeds while playing this league and i don't know that i should on average but i definitely felt like 
losing ignoble hierarch and dryad arbor to the pernicious deed as being kind of a big deal here and ultimately i don't feel like this green black deck was better than other green black decks that i've been playing on the channel recently like the ability to just go turn one ignoble hierarch into turn two grist is really strong and the same is true for opposition agent and endurance but instead of just focusing on doing that consistently i kind of got cute with this plan that also accelerates my opponent and if you're trying to go as fast as possible in ramping with Veteran Explorer, it means you don't get to Opposition Agent quickly. So you can do Veteran Explorer Cabal Therapy thing on turn two, right? But if you want to throw Opposition Agent into the mix, you're not ramping with Veteran Explorer until turn four. And even then, doing that might just run into something like Swords of Plowshares at instant speed that just negates all of it. So while some of our individual cards like Thrun very much did have their moments, I think Nick Fit is an underpowered legacy deck to start with. And I think trying to build Nick Fit with an additional restriction really hurts. Like losing Collector Oof is another thing that really matters at CMC2. You lose Abrupt Decay, you lose Assassin's Trophy, you lose Shoulders Edict, Sudden Edict. Like, those, those cards matter a lot. Um, but, you know, throw me your deck building ideas down in the comments below. And if you end up wanting to buy some of the cards for this deck, check out my sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc., promo code THRABINU. All right, have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!